Welcome back. Well, it's jobs time again. The May jobs report will be coming out tomorrow. A decrease in non-farm jobs from April is expected, with expectations calling uh, for 185,000 jobs for the month of May, and the unemployment rate staying at 4.4 percent. Joining us right now is Vining Sparks chief economist Craig Dismuke. Craig, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, good morning. What's your expectation on the economy and jobs right now? So I think the jobs report will probably be another strong one. We came into the year thinking or expecting around 160 to 165,000 per month. So far, we've averaged 185,000. So it's been a good a good year so far for job growth, despite one month that was appeared to be weather related. Uh, we expect that this month there's no reason to, to believe that it'll be any different. Initial jobless claims continue to be at their lowest level since 1973, uh, and so I expect we'll probably see another good report in the 180,000 range. Does that impact the Fed? The meeting is on June 14th. Do we see an interest rate hike? Uh, we do expect to see an interest rate hike. The uh, it, 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 it's a really high bar at this point to affect the Fed. Uh, I think the Fed. Uh, signaled in their May minutes that they're going to hike in June. And I think you have to see a really disappointing report in May, something sub 100,000 uh, with the unemployment rate ticking up and, and average hourly earnings possibly going lower uh, before it could throw that into question. So at this point, I think June is, is on the table mm. for a hike. Okay. The household survey, which gets very little publicity, but over time, even though it fluctuates month to month, is a good indicator of small businesses being created. What do you expect? What trends do you see there in terms of uh, new businesses coming into existence? Well, I think one of the interesting things in the household report, it, it, obviously small business creation hasn't been as strong as you'd like to see it. I think there's been a, a bit of a uh, risk aversion out there. Uh, one of the most important things, or one of the most interesting things in the household report has been the, uh, the re-entrance to the labor force. And from, from 2009 until late 15, we had the labor force grew by 28,000 per month on average. Uh, from, November, or from September of 2015 to current, we've grown by an average of 180,000. So while the participation rate came down all the way down to 62.4 percent, it's now turning back higher, which is one of the reasons the unemployment rate hasn't continued to fall uh, quite as much as it as, as would have been expected based on the amount of job creation we've seen. So I'm interested to see if we continue to see people come back into the labor force. If so, I think there's a lot of slack that's potentially out there, as many as 7 million people that could come back in, uh, which would weigh on wage growth. But mean more consumer spending, though. Well, it'd be great, right? We'd have more consumer spending, uh, but, but the Fed is really looking for wage growth to signal that inflation is going to be steady near their two percent target. So far, we haven't been able to, or they haven't been able to accomplish that. Well, if you cut people's taxes, you give them more money to spend. Oh yeah. Well, that, that, that's one of the areas of uh, when we look at the income uh, reports where uh, the increase in taxes is, is showing up. Uh, it's, it's weighing on disposable income, uh, and so real disposable income has been growing at a fairly low rate and more recently part of that is due to the increase in taxes so a tax cut would certainly help with that so let's talk about that mm -hmm. policy coming out of washington how important is it for markets what are you telling clients right now well it's it's hugely important i mean this is the markets have priced in uh, a lot of optimism the markets have priced in the 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 economic agenda that, that Trump ran on, uh, which in, called for deregulation, tax cuts, uh, re reforming health care, uh, and then possibly infrastructure spending. Uh, and right now they've priced in those things getting done to some degree. Uh, hasn't been completely priced in, but if we don't see those things get done, if, if, if they're unable to get health care done and then subsequently get to taxes, which is where we see the real economic benefit, uh, I think the markets have would need to correct from where we are. Hypothetical question. If the rate goes down from 35 to 25 instead of 15 or 20, how much would that adversely affect the market? I don't, I don't know how to quantify that. I'd like to give you an answer, but I think... Well, the market's not expecting 15 percent. Right, I, think the, I think the market's expecting between 20 and 25 percent yeah. at yeah. this point. So. So I, think we're, I, think we're gonna see, I think we're going to see health reform get done. I think Republicans know that um, they will be held politically responsible if it doesn't get done. I um, mean, you can't get to tax reform until you get to health care. One of the interesting things was Mitch McConnell um, in the last few weeks has been indicating, well, you know, let's, he's kind of dampening um, uh, expectations. I think he's a very wily guy because what I'm seeing on the ground is when he did that, the base is mad. And right now, where I live, there's a lot of activism that you wouldn't normally see on the Republican side after a big win like this. And I think what he's doing is he's, he said that on purpose to get people in the, in, the, in the states where there are senators 
who are you know waffling um, to put some pressure on them from their base. So you so you think they'll get oh, the, the policies, John? That's health care. I, I hope you're right. I, I hope I'm right, yeah. but I, I do think it's all on the Senate. So call your senator. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Craig, would you put new money? Will you tell clients to put new money to work in the markets right here, or do you want to wait until we get more clarity on this? So we're, we specifically work with fixed income investors, and we we think that on the fixed income side, we feel like this is potentially a good opportunity because we think the Fed, the Fed is going to have hiked three times in seven months. Uh, and, and that's, I don't see going forward them being able to continue at that pace. Uh, as for the equity markets, you know, we have a forecast for that. And I would say that equities can continue to run so long as the Fed keeps rates as low as they've been. Uh, policies accommodative here and across the ocean. It's, you know, it's everywhere really right now. Policy is very accommodative and there's a lot of liquidity out there. More so in Europe. Yeah. The markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent, right? Craig, great to have you on the show today. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Craig Dismuke there, uh, Vining Sparks. Make sure to check